So the problem with cloud today is there's a lot of choices. When you talk about the likes of OneDrive, Google Drive, iDrive from Apple, and even Mega Upload. There's so many choices out there that basically will drive you to a lot of decisions where you've got to manage very different, different UIs and user experiences from managing uh, the drives and the storage that you currently have. Well, what if I told you there's a way that we could solve that? So today we're going to talk about Malt Cloud. Now, what is Malt Cloud and why isn't it called Multi Cloud? Well, I suppose that IP may have already existed and that's why they're called Malt Cloud. However, the clue is massively in the name. So Malt Cloud in itself gives you the flexibility of connecting multiple cloud providers and their storage into one simple UI. So when we come to explore this, you'll be able to see what it integrates with, what you can control, etc. Now, for full transparency, what I was provided was a license key to operate with Malt Cloud. They reached out and asked me to do a review of their product. Uh, at the time, I'd never heard of Malt Cloud, so I always think it's nice and interesting when somebody a lot new comes along and kind of offers me the opportunity to do a review. I generally tend to have a quick look at what the product is before I put my name to it because it's not something I want to just put my name to anything. But when I actually started to have a quick look around Malt Cloud, I could absolutely see the use case for it. So let's give you a bit of an overview of what Malt Cloud actually is. So Malt Cloud in itself is a cloud-based UI, which gives us access to, as it says there, do cloud transfer between cloud drives. So it uses a couple of examples there of Google Drive and OneDrive, and we'll get onto that a little bit later. What you can also do is use it to do a cloud sync. So the idea is that you can, a bit like our sync would work um, in many respects, you can actually sync two cloud services together. You can then also obviously as a result, backup and restore files between clouds. So if you think of like the scenario I've got when I've got something like 15 gig with uh, Google Drive and I've got one terabyte with OneDrive, having that flexibility to move between the two seamlessly rather than downloading and re-uploading is really straightforward and simple and it's quite a nice feature to have. You can then also, which is a new feature, so when I originally looked at this, I don't think this feature was available, but now it certainly is, so you can migrate and backup emails to the clouds as well, which again is a really nice feature. So I generally use for my personal life uh, Google. Um, I've always had a Google Mail account, um, but I obviously through my business, etc., have Outlook and uh, my own domains, etc., which utilize 365. So it's nice to be able to connect both of those in and backup. Um, emails, particularly for my business, it enables me to obviously back up certain ones rather than relying on Exchange to look after them. So again, it's quite nice. You've got the ability to, as it says there, a Cloud Explorer and manage all cloud accounts in one space. And the, the great thing is it does have a very simple UI, which we'll get onto in a moment. And this gives you an idea of the ones supported. So pretty much everyone I've kind of seen here, I've used in the past or potentially used. Um, obviously, people have always used stuff like Mega. Uh, you've got the likes of Dropbox, SharePoint. Um, I've not connected it to SharePoint at the moment, but I certainly could. It's not difficult to do that connection. Um, OneDrive for Business, uh, your own cloud, uh, Amazon, so it's got that. Stuff like Evernote, uh, SugarSync, all those kind of um, elements that you can connect into. So there's a lot of options there. Uh, the reviews generally are from the likes of Tom's Guide, Tech Advisor, Tech Radar. So again, I tended to use that as a guide to whether I actually wanted to do a review of this. And usually if I see some of these names, I'm, I'm usually quite relaxed about having those conversations. So anyway, that's a little bit about the product. Now, the mobile apps it does have. Um, you can get it on the App Store and uh, on Android. So you do have those options. And they can pretty much similarly, simultaneously work that way as well as the standard way that you'd want to work. So that just gives you a bit of an overview. Now, the pricing is obviously where it gets interesting because a lot of it will work on the amount of data you transfer between clouds. So whether that's a sync or whether that's a direct transfer. Now, if you're going to look at trying this out, I would recommend looking at the five gig for a month free, just maybe to have a look 
to see exactly what you think. You can basically tra transfer around five gigs, so it's quite useful just to have a bit of a play around. Um, you obviously have a reduction in the amount of threads, so the, the actual transfer speed will be a little bit, little bit less. Um, and you can only convert 50 emails per month. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now, the one I've been provided here is this one. So I've been given the annual one, which basically enables me to do the uh, quite a large chunk, so 1.2 terabytes worth of data. Uh, I can have 10 threads, schedule transfer and sync backups, etc. Now, if you wanted to go for the full-blown one, there is a yearly one available, which, to be honest, makes a lot of sense. And then you can flip over to unlimited data. So unlimited data, again, is a slightly different cost, but again, has some caveats around what they're looking for. So... If again, if you swap to monthly, you can see you can do a monthly uh, view, but to be honest, if you look at that one there, you can see it's actually more efficient um, to swap over to a yearly plan because you're going to save 50% and similar with that, you know, so a lot of companies do this, so it's quite nice to do. Uh, a little bit about the kind of um, payments you can use. It's all mentioned there. Um, again, about the invoice. Uh, can you trust it securely? It's always the the big part so it is ssl secured um so from that respect it's going to be encrypted um at some point so in transit it's not going to be visible by just anybody so that's kind of a little bit of an overview of what malt cloud is now when it comes to actually connecting so you'll notice at the moment i've got my free already connected in here i've got google drive which you can see how much i'm using i actually told a bit of a lie earlier i've got um 17 gig, I think I've got two extra free. Uh, iCloud, which is just from my Apple phone, and OneDrive here. So you can see in here that basically all of these are connected, and you'll see I've also got my Gmail and Outlook already connected. Very, very simple to do. So for me to do it, I'm, I'm not going to go through the process necessarily, but basically click on Add Cloud, and you can find what you're looking for. So if I was going to do it with the likes of Google Drive, I just click on there, I sign in, I you know it will ask for a connection. If you've got any um, multi-factor authentication, it'll ask for that kind of thing just to go through. And it seamlessly connects and it's really straightforward. Similarly, if you're going to do it with OneDrive, it will follow the similar process. So again, you sign in, if you've got MFA and using that authenticator, it will work very, very seamlessly. Now, when it comes to emails, Again, it works the same. You'll notice 365 mail is coming soon, so it's not supported yet. But again, it's the same process. You click on Outlook. It'll ask you for um, your credentials when it comes up. Uh, and then you just kind of step through that process. So again, really straightforward. Now, if I was going to look at task lists, what I could do is create a transfer task. So this is when it comes to that scheduling. Uh, I can create a team transfer task. Um, again, that's if you've got a team. So if you've got a team of people utilizing Malt Cloud, that's the way to do it. There's different pricing, I believe, for the elements there. You've got stuff around the sync, backup, and remote. So all those kind of bits, and that looks just like an upload function. So all of them are quite straightforward. Now, if I wanted to transfer a file from, say, Google Drive, let's go in and pick something. Let's take um, let's take some of this evidence that I've got here. Actually, let's back up that whole folder because I've got a very particular use case for that. I'll take away everything else because I don't need that. Um, but basically, I'm going to back up evidence. I don't want that either. And what I'm going to do is put it onto my OneDrive. So all that's going to do now is give me the option to do that. Uh, as you see, I've got nothing to say about evidence in there at the moment, but I'll just click OK. Just OneDrive. I think it might want me to create a folder, possibly. Let's, uh, let's create a new folder and we'll call it evidence. So it's obviously looking for me to... Well, let's just stick it in ebooks, that's fine. So we're going to stick it in ebooks and we'll just do a transfer now. So that's behind the scenes running and you'll see in the task list now there is a transfer up and running. Now that will take a while depending on how big those files are. Now because these are just PDFs, they're not going to take very long at all. But what I'll do in a moment is show you that that's happened. So at the moment, they weren't sitting in that OneDrive. If I, however, click onto my OneDrive and go into eBooks, you can now see evidence and it all sits there. So that's now worked. So from that point, it was really straightforward and simple to do. 
So that's cloud transfer. Team transfers, like I said, is if you've got uh, different accounts, so you can connect in your business ones, so your likes of uh, OneDrive for Business, Dropbox, etc. Uh, cloud sync would enable me to have a real-time sync between the two. So what I could do is connect that evidence file up now. So if I updated it on one area, it'd update to the other, which is something I probably would set up. And we could set up a two-way sync there. So what I could do is go into Google Drive again, go into evidence, click OK, and then again, similar process, so basically OneDrive, uh, go into eBooks, click OK, not iCloud, OneDrive, eBooks, which is still thinking about it, into Evidence, and then OK, and that's going to set up sync, and I can make it a two-way sync, so it will sync between the two, and click sync now. So that's basically going to make sure that there's a sync there and I can have a task that has it. Uh, again, you can see we've got the option for real-time sync and we've got options for various other kind of syncs in there. So again, quite great and useful to use. When it comes to cloud backup, uh, it's just another way to back up one from the other, which is kind of what I did using a transfer, so I don't really need to necessarily go through that. A remote upload enables me to basically take uh, stuff like uh, links, torrents, magnets, exactly, and transfer them directly to the cloud. Obviously, I'm not going to go through that at the moment, but there we are. Uh, shares, quite simple. So if we've got shared files, what we can do is manage them here. Um, save shares as well, we can add these in. Uh, if we want to share from here, basically it says here, just right click and use the share option. So that would be in any of the files. So when we actually get dump into the likes of uh, OneDrive, I'm just gonna show you that in a moment, I could deliberately share that evidence file. Comes to email migration, what I can do is, I'm not going to go into my emails, but basically what I could do is take all of my Gmails and back them up to OneDrive, or all of my Outlook bits and drop them back to OneDrive, etc. So there's a couple of options there, which I think if you think of my business, which I haven't connected at the moment, that's gonna be a really useful feature to actually back up my emails directly to OneDrive. So again, quite a useful feature there um, for, for peace of mind reasons. So now if I go into Google Drive, like I said, if I go into evidence and I wanted to share these folders, um, according to the thing, all I need to do is click share and all I need to do is share with multi-cloud. Now what that will enable me to do is basically share that option into multi-cloud. So if I share that particular statement, you can have public share, private share, or source share. So what I can do is enable the different type of sharing activities. So one would be to share it publicly to anyone, um, and the other would be to obviously private share it there to enable me just to give them a password, etc. And a source share is obviously just to do with creating a link to the basically source cloud drive. So I'm not going to create it at the moment, but as you can see, I can navigate around my OneDrive. I can navigate around various other bits of like 3D prints over the years, but I've had um, the G code, etc. for them, all kind of sits in here. So I can kind of navigate around, which is really nice. If I wanted to look at my emails, for example, I'll show you this one, because it's not so sensitive, but I could go into my junk mail, for example. It's always a good one. And you can kind of see um, some of the stuff I've just had in junk mail, which, um, yeah, it just sits in there. But that will enable me to navigate around um, Malt Cloud. So, yeah, I mean, overall, like I said, it's actually a really nice product. Um, if you look at task list, obviously you can see that these are successful. So they're currently working. So they're syncing, etc. I could set up a real time sync to enable it to do that but I could also create tasks that repeat themselves. So I can set schedules on this to make sure it runs every day at a certain times. So that basically enables it to do that sync for me. So those, those folders are constantly remaining in sync. Uh, I can have it as real time. Um, obviously that would be more process intensive and certainly use more transfer um, elements. So I could just run a sync daily at a certain time. So if one of them becomes out of line, those two will sync together, which is really key when you're looking at having that backup between different cloud providers. So overall, what do I think of Malt Cloud? Um, well, I'll summarize in a moment, but you know, I'd like to thank them for reaching out, um, first of all, because it's, it's always nice to have uh, people reach out and obviously give me an opportunity to do a review of their product. Um, like I said, from, from my point, it, they just wanted me to kind of show their, showcase their product off. Uh, they won't have seen this video, 
um, prior to uploading. Um, you know, the, the agreement was that they gave me a license key. Uh, they're going to help me a little bit with marketing my own channel. So that's nice of them. They might share some of my uh, videos on their, you know, on their social media platform uh, as a thank you. Uh, they did talk about fees at one point, and it's not something I necessarily um, ask for. It's not something I'd want to do. I'd rather look at having opportunities to actually pick up the product um, and, and actually do a review because my view is is that I'll always try and give my honest assessment of it. And to be honest, for the price point, um, you know, it, it's worth giving it a go. I would say give it a go, see if it's actually got a use case for you. If you're a business, then absolutely something like this may come in very, very handy. Um, or if you're somebody who likes to maintain data in multiple places, so if you think about the likes of having Dropbox, uh, Mega Upload, those kind of things, what you could do is basically utilise the ability of having free storage, which you get with some of these, and having the flexibility of being able to move your data around and, and controlling them all from one place. Obviously, the UI doesn't look as, you know, as polished as some, but, you know, realistically... For, for the price you're paying it does it's functional it does what you want it to do um, it's not bogged down with so much stuff as well so sometimes it could be viewed as a little bit cleaner um, just because it's kind of well mapped out where shared where shared well shared out as well and you know from that point it's fantastic so yeah So the great thing I found with Malt Cloud is it wasn't something I was necessarily looking for at the time, but when they reached out to me, it kind of made a lot of sense to me, particularly the likes it can integrate with the likes of your uh, storage that you've got out there, whether it be Dropbox, uh, all those kind of ones that work quite seamlessly on their own. But they're having the facility to integrate them all under one UI and having the control and access there to sync and back up and move uh, that data quite seamlessly just using a single pane of glass makes a lot of sense and really really was a, a good product that I was actually looking for but didn't realize I needed and I think that's the great thing sometimes with technology and with software companies that sometimes something comes along and surprises you and that's certainly the case with Malt Cloud. now as I said to you at the very beginning uh, of this video Obviously, they reached out and they did provide me the uh, license key to be able to use this product, uh, but they've not paid me for my time or for this review. And they certainly haven't seen this review before I've previously recorded it or uploaded it to YouTube. So the good thing is there that my deal with Malt Cloud is basically just one of giving me the license and being able to actually utilize the product, which I can now continue to use. Um, and also to hopefully give me a little bit more market share with the kind of viewers that they have assigned to their channel. So uh, if you're very new to this channel, welcome aboard and please go and have a look at some of the other videos. But Malt Cloud in its whole has been really simple to use. Actually connecting the accounts was simple, seamless. It wasn't very difficult at all. Um, and it was really you know, straightforward to use. And yeah, I, I would probably go out and purchase it looking at the pricing obviously I did mention earlier what I would probably start out with using the trial to see how you get on and then therefore look at opportunities if at a later point I do get some affiliation links they will be in the description below and similar with any discount codes if any discount codes appear on my channel at any point they will be in the description or maybe in the comments so please maybe drop a comment in there to let me know what you think of Malt Cloud yourself anyway that's it for today. All I'd like to say is if you have liked what you've seen, hit the like and subscribe and maybe that bell. And as always, I'll see you next time.